Welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation as usual as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm thrilled that you can join us today. We're going to be talking with Mods Awards and find out about some of their winners for 2022. But before I introduce you to them, I always like to welcome uh, new listeners to our show. Alzheimer Speaks was created because my own mother lived with dementia for 30 years, and my goal is to connect people to services, products, and tools so that they can live graciously alongside dementia. I do want to mention that we have updated our website. Uh, So if you go to alzheimerspeaks.com, you will find one whole section that has just free educational resources. And there's, gosh, uh, over a dozen uh, different topics there to pick from. So go to alzheimerspeaks.com and just uh, click on that section. You'll be able to get to Dementia Map, our global resource directory from there as well. We're going to hear from the Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner, and then we'll be right back with our guests. I love the Footbar Walker, and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest. There are some clients who, despite our best rehab efforts, just aren't able to return to performing a sit-to-stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver-specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer in the Footbar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day, and don't forget, if you can't do it, adapt it. So we are back and we are going to hear about Moz Awards and some of the honorees for both individual and uh, organizational-based winners for 2022. This celebration is always really fun, uh, seeing the innovations that people are doing. And today we have with us Marilyn Reichel. She is the executive director of of Moz Awards. And joining her is Sandy Samberskai, and she is the co-founder and board chair of Elderwise, which is one of the organizational winners of Mods Awards. And then we have Haley Richman with us, who is the founder of Kid Caregivers for one of their individual Mods Awards uh, honors as well. Now, Marilyn was instrumental in launching Mods Awards back in 2019 with the original founder, Richard Ferry, and his wife. Previously, Marilyn was a devoted care partner to both of her parents who had developed Alzheimer's disease. Her mom began to paint and her paintings drew Marilyn in and introduced her to this woman who definitely had something to say. Thus began Marilyn's journey as a care partner, and she is now dedicated to the joyful mission of Maud's Awards. A little background on Sandy. Uh, Sandy is the co-founder of Elderwise, which was started back in 1997. And she is the co-author with Ruth Newald Falcon of The Elderwise Way, a different approach to life with dementia, which explains their Elderwise philosophy of spirit-centered care. I love that phrase. And she has practiced physical therapy for 25 years and is a certified saging leader and saging uh, international professional as well. And then last, I want to introduce you to Haley Richmond, 
who is 15 years old, but a powerhouse in her own right. She is the founder of Kid Caregivers, uh, which she founded at the age of 10. And she's also the executive director of Puzzles to Remember. And she was a caregiver for her own grandmother who had dementia for nine years. Well, ladies, I've done your introductions already, and I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Uh, it's such an honor, um, and I can't wait to have this discussion about Mods Awards and uh, how each of you have gotten involved you know, with this process. But first, I always like to ask everybody if they've been touched by dementia in their own family or circle of friends. And so, Marilyn, I'm going to start with you first, if you don't mind. Not at all. And it's wonderful to be here. Um, it started with my mother and my father, um, who were both developing dementia, and I became their um, family designated caregiver. Um, and I didn't know what I didn't know. So with mom, everything changed when she started to paint. And that was actually at Elderwise. And just Everyone knows the board probably doesn't even know this, so it had nothing to do with their selection. But mother began to paint, and all of a sudden, I realized that she was still there, that this wonderful person was still living with purpose and creativity and an invention, and it changed my life, and it changed her life. And I started to see this glorious woman, and it for the next seven years, I was able, had the, the great privilege of taking that journey with her. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. I, I love uh, the tie into the arts. Uh, I just think it's so important. And so often we think, oh, they can't do that, you know, instead of giving people a chance. And then such beautiful surprises can come out of that. Um, Sandy, how about you? Have you been personally touched by dementia in your own family or circle of friends? Hi, Lori, and everyone else. Thank you. Um, I have not been personally affected by dementia in any uh, profound way. I think I wound up here as a kind of a calling. It was something I was meant to do. And it just sort of bit by bit, I was led to this place. Wonderful. Thanks. And Haley, I had mentioned in the intro that you're um, your grandma had dementia, but you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so actually both my grandparents had Alzheimer's disease. My grandfather, who passed away when I was really young, and my grandmother, who got it when I was four years old. And that really inspired me because when I was very young, I didn't understand what Alzheimer's really was. And I wanted to find out more about it. And that really inspired me to start my whole thing. You know, I have to chuckle when you say when I was very young, because you're only 15 and you got into this when you were 10. And, and in the intro, I talk about you being a powerhouse. And I, I just can't wait to see, you know, as as you grow, what you are going to do, because you have blown a lot of adults out of the water with what you've accomplished already. So um, thanks for sharing that. Marilyn, I'm going to have you tell people a little bit about Mods Awards. How did it come about? You know, this is the third year, all yeah. of those types of fun things. Well, so it really began with Richard and Maud Ferry, and they were a family, a couple that lived what they would call the American dream. And um, he was a successful business executive. She was the matriarch extraordinaire. And um, in about 2011, she started to show signs of dementia. And in 2013, he became her primary family caregiver. And like so many, he had no idea what to do. And so he began to search. And his search didn't lead him to the answers he wanted. And so it led him to form Mods Awards, which is a form, forum to, to discover to celebrate and to share innovations, ideas, practices of care that can actually enhance the lives of people living with dementia, their family members and their care partners. And so we've been in, we, we give cash awards to 
in four categories of care. So we give uh, 15,000, 15,000, 25,000 to three organizations and 5,000 to five individuals. And each year, um, the first year we did this, it was really focused on organizations in the Pacific Northwest. And the second year, it really started to expand across the country. And the third year, it really is now almost entirely across the country. Sandy Sebersky is a, is a, is a, a, an exception. Um, and what's interesting uh, is that as we expand across the country, we are going to be doing some interesting promotions, not promotions, but, but we are going to be working with um, churches, specifically African-American churches to try to reach more people. And we're also thinking of doing um, a program to reach uh, the Hispanic community with an organization that can actually translate all of our announcements into Spanish, translate the uh, applications into Spanish, and then translate them back into English so we know what they're doing. Um, and so it's going to be really interesting to see how this expands. Oh, that's exciting. That's really yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, I'll have to touch base with you offline on it. I've got a couple of ideas on both of those for you. So oh, great. You don't have some contacts already um, in mind on that. Um, so you've kind of covered what's next for MODS Awards as well um, in yeah. that. Is there, uh, one of the things that I guess I want you to explain is the application process, because I think it's very different from the normal fill yeah. out a grant type thing. And I think that's important for the audience to know. Yeah, well. it's, these are not grants. These are awards for achievements that have happened. And so there is an application process, which is, we hope is not that onerous. Um, and um, so it's really, that's the thing we have to keep explaining to people. This is not a grant and it actually helps your application. If you don't talk about things you're planning on doing, because tell us once you've done them. And so, yeah, it's an award for achievements. Um, it's, it's, um, it's unusual. Mm -hmm. it, re it really is. And it's, it's really cool to see. Um, now, one of the things you also put together is uh, basically a magazine of a lot of the people, not only your winners, but um, other people who have applied and stuff too. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the, this is one of the things I really love about Mods Awards and which I admire so much about Richard, um, that he wants to share these. I mean, originally this started about he was looking for things for Maud and and Maud passed away last year. Um, and as he would say, she is the wind beneath his wings. And I would add and always will. Be. Um, and so um, so we do a handbook every year. We just putting the final touches on the, the next one. It'll be available on November 15th. And this is a handbook where we talk about probably about 52 of the innovations that came our way so that people can find out about them, how to reach them, how they might be able to incorporate them into their organizations or their lives. And this will be available. It's all free. It'll be available for download on our website modsawards.org. And also you can um, send in to have a printed version sent to you free. Unbelievable. I mean, that is so helpful for people to physically have something in their hand and to be able to see mm -hmm. it. To me, it's, it's a, it's a book of hope, you know, yeah. because it's so many things that people didn't know existed before. And, exactly. And that is huge. That is, that is massive. And for it, not to cost because budgets are tight for, for, you know, businesses, but families are struggling out there too. And it's like, what do I pay for? And just to be able to have that easy access of a download and, or if you, you know, like those physical pages, you know, in yeah. front of you to be able to have um, is really cool. Well, let's talk to a couple of your winners here. We can have everybody on the show. So uh, we have a Sandy with us who is with Elderwise. First, I want to ask you, Sandy, what made you decide to apply? Because I think that might help other people out there listening. Mm -hmm. of, why bother? Well, I've known about MODS Awards and uh, I, I applied 
before from the beginning. So this wasn't my first time applying. And I think uh, we applied because I feel strongly that we have something to offer to uh, the, this community of um, people living with dementia and their care partners and something that can enrich the lives, their lives. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important to me that this work continue and that also it can, other people can learn about it. Wonderful. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Elderwise? What the heck is it and how did it come about? <laughs> okay. Well, how it came about is, I think it's kind of an interesting question because the seeds of how it, how it came about in the beginning are really have to do with what it is today. And the most important idea for the creation of Elderwise was my desire to work with the whole person. I was a physical therapist and it was my work, it was my job to work with a person's body. But it kept growing this desire to work with body, mind and spirit. And I was young then in my twenties and I still had a lot more tools to gather, but the seed was planted. Another important element was my involvement in conscious aging. There was a conscious aging movement. I joined an organization called, now it's called Saging International. And I became a certified saging leader. Here I learned about the work of aging, life review, life repair, leaving a legacy, facing one's own mortality. So the first aim in creating Elderwise in 1997 was to make a space where people could come together to learn and grow and do the work of aging through community and social time together, through discussion and important about important topics, through artistic work, sharing a meal, movement, and so forth. The thing was that many who attended these first gatherings had different diagnoses. They had multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, dementia, in addition to old age, isolation, and loneliness. As my commitment to working with this group of people grew, I became interested in these questions. Who are you if you have dementia? And can you learn and grow? Out of this exploration, I found some answers and I learned a lot. And this is how Elderwise and the philosophy of spirit-centered care was born. I, I love the phrase spirit-centered care. You know, I, I kind of get the creepy crawlies when I hear person-centered care because I think it's overused and under-delivered a lot. And so I've used relationship-based care, but I really like that spirit centered because it really is that that connection on all levels and that the soul is still fully present no matter what's going on in our physical bodies and that we have the ability to communicate in so many different ways and to me that just that phrase just opens that door for people to see that more more fully so um, kudos for the phrase I, I love that and and for you know, letting that seed grow in you as you, as you gathered, you know, more knowledge and more tools, you know, over the years. Um, I, I think, I think for so many people in this space, they're touched and it's something that just, it like bites on them and, and it's not letting them go. You know, it's kind of like one of those little gremlins got, you know, you're, I'm sticking with you and you're going to, you're going to go through and you're going to make a difference in this process because it is so important and there's so many beautiful things that blossom out of out of that um so what are some of the unique things that you know in your social model like for adult day programs which you know a lot of those have gone by the wayside with covid as well and that is something that is so needed um, in communities um, are you involved with adult days Yes, we have kind of two programs. One is our adult day program. So we have our own adult day program. 
And the other is our educational program. Those are the two prongs. And thank you for the spirit-centered care comments. Uh, we did trademark that uh, phrase because even though it's a subtle difference, it's an important difference. And um, yeah. So, well, I can tell you just a little bit about spirit-centered care, or should I just dive into the day oh, you program? Oh, can, you can tell us a little bit more. That's fine on that. Yeah. So, um, well, spirit-centered care, I just wanted to say it doesn't have anything to do with religion. And it's, but rather it has to do with the deepest part of who we are. And it begins with this concept of wholeness. And when I think about wholeness, I like to think about an array of people I know from the youngest to the oldest and from the healthiest to the frailest. And to ask, you know, are you whole if you are a baby? Are you whole if you're a toddler? Are you whole if you have, if you're a teenager? Maybe Haley could answer that. <laughs> Are you whole if you have an amputation, multiple sclerosis, mental illness? Are you whole if you are 105 years old? Are you whole if you have dementia? And at different times in our lives, we're not fully developed. And later, we're past our prime. But at Elderwise, we consider that we are always whole and that we haven't lost the essence of who we are. And in fact, that this essence is never lost. Somewhere in the spectrum between birth and death, our bodies decline, our brains also decline, but we are more than our bodies and more than our brains. And at Elderwise, we acknowledge the deepest part of who we are, which may be understood differently for different people. So spirit-centered care means working from our own essence and recognizing the essence, that deepest part of others. And it is both a very simple idea and a life's work. So as a staff person, working from my own essence is a spiritual practice for me, is it allows me to stay in touch with who I really am and to work in alignment with my own values. This attitude informs everything we do at Elderwise, the way we greet someone, the way we serve tea, the way we share a meal or paint together. Participants understand that they are being treated as whole with deep respect and the difference is very subtle, but important. Um, so our model day program is unique because of this philosophy. It exists as a place to learn and grow and to expand. Most people don't use the words growth and dementia in the same sentence, but my 25 years of experience has taught me that we do and can learn and grow with dementia. We can become more open, more loving, more expansive, and more tolerant. Why? Because these things are deeper and closer to our essence. Just as if one has low vision, the tactile senses become more prominent in the same way, if our brain is not working well, our heart can become more prominent. At Elderwise, the participants and staff can grow and learn and expand through art, the camaraderie, the discussion, and other shared experiences. And I have to believe that this is a good thing. Not, you know, I don't know what happens at death, but I do believe it will be better if we face it with a more openness and more loving, expansive way. I totally, totally agree. Um, and I, I love that approach. How about your um, educational programs for caregivers? How Can you give us some examples of that and, and how you go about that? Right. Well, uh, over COVID, we had a chance to develop some of our educational programs. And the first thing was that we had wrote down our philosophy in a book. Mm -hmm. So we're 
we're proud of our book, The Elder Wise Way, A Different Approach to uh, Life with Dementia. And this, this book shares everything about our philosophy. And it's very easy to understand for care partners, both um, professional and family caregivers. And so um, right now, our first online training course is ready to launch. And we have received a continuing education unit approval from DSHS and the National Association of Activities professionals for this one hour course, which is an overview of spirit-centered care. And so this, this course will be available for staff in retirement communities um, and for family caregivers at a reasonable fee and will be free to students and low income uh, family care partners. Well, that's exciting. That's, that's really exciting. Um, what has what has been your your feedback from people with your spirit centered you know care philosophy? What what have you heard is is different and meaningful to both those living with dementia um, or attending your your services? Well, I think people who come to Elderwise they feel that deep respect the participants, the people living with dementia, and they understand that they are growing and having fun and expanding. And I think their care partners and their support partners feel really um, pleased to um, you know, leave them with us for that period of time. And that they also get to, to learn about Elderwise and take that philosophy into their homes. We have one family in particular that they say, we have an Elderwise home. And mm -hmm. I, I love that idea. They take the concepts of slowing down time or the concept of, of being present um, and the, the many other concepts um, the you know expanding through the different uh, artistic work and um, so I think though so on a on a personal level for families and participants that's great and we're just beginning the you know since the book came out we're just we just did a conference at the Dementia Action Alliance conference um, so we're just beginning to share to a broader audience about spirit-centered care and, you know, look forward to doing more of that. Wonderful. Well, I, I love the philosophy and I love that you're leading by example. I don't think there's any better way to go about that because it's easier, I think, for people to walk in and embrace it when they, when they see it, when they experience, when they feel it. Um, it takes the scary out of this being having to be a difficult journey and not that it's easy every single day and every single moment. It's not, you know, no, we all no. have our ups and our downs, no. um, but there, there are ways for us to live graciously together and to support one another. And I think doing that through your spirit centered model um, just makes it so much more comfortable um, one last question for you. Now you were a, a winner of or, the organizational winner and you know, that was what, $25,000. Do you have big plans? I mean, have you had time even to think about what are we going to do with that? I mean, what a gift. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I tell you what, I, I know what we want to do with money, you know, mm -hmm. you know, these developing these courses takes, you know, time, you have to film it and, it takes money, it takes resources. So, you know, we're a small organization that, that packs a big punch. And so what I would love to do is do more of these educational courses. I love to pay our staff more. Mm -hmm. I would love to do those things. And the reality is we're using it to survive. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been in COVID, we've just opened up our programs again. It's very exciting to be in person and we're part of the uh, memory hub in, at C in Seattle and which is a really excited, exciting group, a collaborating organization. So feel things feel really positive, but the fact is we need to use it for our daily living. Um, mm -hmm. But I look forward to having a lot more money to do a lot more things. 
<laughs> well, that's neat. And, and the intent of Mods Awards, too, is not that you have to throw it back in. I mean, it is an award for an accomplishment and stuff, but I think so many people in this space just normally, you know, want to infuse, infuse those dollars and, um, you know, hope and resources to what they're doing. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing your story, Sandy. Appreciate it. My hey, pleasure. Thank you. Haley, let's go to you next. Why don't you tell us a little bit about kid caregivers? You know, what the heck is that? How'd you come up with the name? Kind of got an idea on that one, but um, why don't you tell us in your own words? Yeah, so um, when I was four years old, my grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and it made me feel very alone and isolated. And I wanted to help other children who were dealing with this also. So I founded Kid Caregivers, which is my online support group. And we also help people who are living in nursing homes, because I remember when I would visit my grandmother, the isolation, isolation she felt living in a nursing home. So I would bring puzzles to her with my friends and I saw how much it benefited her. So I went to other people and then I was doing it throughout her facility. And I thought, you know, why should it only benefit people in my grandmother's facility? But I want to like help people all around the world. So I got together with some of my friends who lived in different countries because I lived by the United Nations and they all brought puzzles there and we opened up a lot of branches and that's really how it started. Wow, In incredible story. <laughs> Marilyn's shaking her head. I know it's just, uh, it is just an absolutely incredible story. Tell us a little bit about Puzzles to Remember because that's another one of your, your nonprofits too and how that got started and, and how, how the two of these pieces kind of work together. Yes, so Puzzles to Remember is a nonprofit organization that was developed by Max Wallach. And its main goal is to distribute puzzles to nursing homes for people who are living with Alzheimer's disease. And that also helped me create puzzle time because the, pu the puzzles were going to the facilities. And I thought, you know, we should get a bunch of high school students to come solve the puzzles with the people of Alzheimer's disease for that intergenerational connection because puzzles stimulate the visual cortex and they can really help someone. I feel like so could that connection of just talking with someone. Well, in Max, I remember talking to Max when Max was still a kid and, you know, he, he got involved with all of this and I was in awe of him just like I am with you. And, uh, you know, just the concepts, the, the insight, I think both of you two are old souls and young bodies and how lucky are we in the world, you know, to have you on this planet with us because you, you're both movers and shakers there. What are your goals for both of your programs in the, in the future here? So um, one of my main goals is to get to facilities that don't have a lot of resources. Um, I know that people in Africa have reached out to us and it's been really hard to get puzzles there because it costs $500 to ship three puzzles. So I really want to get to facilities that don't have a lot of resources and that really need this because those people are the ones who are feeling very, very isolated. Wow. $500 for three puzzles. That's just ridiculous. Wow. Uh, yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, one thing I'm going to ask, and, and I'm just going to throw it out there because I didn't know that this existed, uh, but I always throw stuff out when it comes to me, mm -hmm. is, you know, like if you mail books, mm -hmm. you can get a pretty big discount mm -hmm. on those, which a lot of people don't know. Um, I, I was like shocked on that. Have you talked with the post office at all to see if there's, a, you know, any special thing? Well that maybe you could get by or tuck a book in in the package and see if you can get a reduced price for it. I don't know. It just seems like, wow, you you have this huge vision and to be limited because of of that um, is so sad. It's just so sad. You can buy an airplane ticket and fill up a suitcase and be cheaper, you know, probably with that. Um, so I yeah. So no, you haven't found anything cheaper in terms of ways that you can, you can transport things over there. 
Unfortunately not, but um, I have a lot of friends who live in various places across the world, so that's really how I was able to get to those places. I actually know someone who lives in South Africa, so we were able to get to one part, so that's good. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. How can other people, you know, get involved with your work? Um, they can email me or go on my website, kidcaregivers.com or puzzlestoremember.org. And they can email us if they want to distribute puzzles, we can give them a place and a tax ID number so they could um, give the puzzles to the facility. And if they want to volunteer, they can reach out. We have ambassadors in all 50 states, so we could find a place for them to volunteer. Wow. So do you have like chapters or is it individuals in the different states? So um, it depends. In some states, we have an ambassador and for that part of the, for their state, they'll control kind of as a leadership role, they can control the facilities and monitor their own volunteers that they recruit. And then for some places, we don't have an ambassador and we have just a group of volunteers who kind of all act as the ambassador. It really depends like how big the state is. Okay. Or do you work with other groups like um, the Youth Movement Against Alzheimer's or Lorenzo's House or anything like that? that um, does a lot with youth or are, are you kind of an island on your own out there? We're kind of like an island on our own out there. <laughs> okay. Cause I, I, I just wonder if, uh, if you might be able to expand some of your work, you know, by joining forces with some of those others, I, I just love hearing and seeing our youth get involved. It just, it really warms my heart. Cause I think a, you have a lot of energy and B, you have just a lot of creativity in terms of, of what you want to do and how you want to change things. And I just, I find it really, really inspiring. What, do you have future plans for, you know, when you get to be, let's say 17, what you want to do? <laughs> um, I want to definitely get to more places and maybe try to even expand this to some places that you know are not getting like a lot that I don't know about that could be really struggling and I want to maybe see if we can get more volunteers in other countries that don't have a lot of resources so that's definitely something I want to work on throughout the year to try and expand. So do you see continuing on as you're an adult with with this whole movement? Yeah I'm very passionate about it and it just brings me so much happiness to see how like just a simple puzzle could make such a difference in someone's life. So I love doing it. Oh, that that's just fantastic. Um, I, I can just see from from Marilyn and Sandy. I mean, everyone's beaming just hearing you talk, you know, your your energy, your excitement. Uh, it's it's wonderful. And I'm just thrilled that, you know, Maud's awards came your way. And uh, as an indiv as a individual is what you won, I believe, for $5,000. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, do you have plans on what you're going to use that money for? Or? Yes. So um, I want to definitely buy more puzzles because um, the way we get our puzzles are either through donations or we have to purchase them ourselves. So that's definitely going to go to that. And then I want to ship puzzles out to these countries that don't have a lot of resources. So that also takes a lot of money. So we're gonna put it towards that also. Oh, fantastic. Um, well, this, uh, like I said, having you guys on just kind of melts my heart. I just, I love hearing about the works that others are doing. And I, I think both of you are just so inspiring. Mods Awards, Marilyn, uh, you and Richard and, and the team there, are just doing such cool things to really help lift spirits and give hope. And I think that's, I think there's been a gap in, in the hope element there in the dementia journey for many, many years. And um, that, that is really rising up. And I think it's just giving everybody a little bit more strength and confidence uh, to move forward again in a, in a gracious uh, fashion. Um, is there anything that anybody wants to add before we give contact information out? Um, Haley, was there anything that you wanted to add that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, I think we covered it all. Okay. Sandy, how about you? Well, I was going to um, share one of the concepts that people could take home with them um, and, and use in their own home if, if you'd want to hear that. Sure, sure. 
So um, we have this concept, which I love, which is called slowing down time. Mm -hmm. And so when you come into the elder wise space, and you can do this in your own homes, when you come in the door of your own home, that you enter a different time zone. We call it the elder wise time zone. In here, everything slows down to match the pace of the person living with dementia. And I think, you know, the pace of life can be very fast and overwhelming even without dementia. And when with dementia, it takes longer to take in and process information, it can be even more overwhelming. It can lead to shutting down and withdrawing. Sometimes I think of myself as standing at a street corner when the cars are rushing by and it's cold and um, the wind is picking up and I'm you know, pulling my sweater tighter around me. And I imagine that this kind of a feeling is what a, a person living with dementia might feel like. So at Elderwise, we take the time to hang up our coats and adjust our chairs and adjust the light for everyone's comfort. So rather than closing in and shutting down with a slower pace, people can relax and open up and share stay connected to their center. And I like working with people with dementia because I also like a slower time zone. Well, it's interesting because we just uh, we just fell back with the time zone and there's lots of talk <laughs> about, do we need to do that? Don't we need to do that? What are we gonna do? Um, and you know, it, it can screw people's schedules up, but you are looking at really just trying to meld into where you are. And, uh, you know, I, I see myself, I see so many others just quick pace, kind of scooting their butt onto the chair and trying to pretend like they were there on time, even if they were running late or feeling organized, but that angst is still in the body. And you're just saying, just breathe. Life's going to move forward. It, we're going to get it all done, but let's just all be centered and peaceful. It just makes everybody's day so much easier. So I love I love that tip. I think that's a beautiful tip for all of us um, in this world, just to slow down, know that nothing's good. You know, we're not going to miss anything, but we're going to, we're going to be filled and we're going to be more attentive when we're centered, when we're calm, we're going to be able to take more in and we're going to be able to give more too. Um, you know, to the, to the community that we're with, or even if we're just, sitting by ourselves, I think we're going to feel more full uh, by doing that more satis satisfied. So thank you. Marilyn, anything you wanted to add? It's such a privilege to work with Mods Awards and to be around people like Haley. <laughs> and I want to know what you're going to be doing when you're 15. <laughs> and, and Sandy, and all of the programs, which, which express so forcefully that Persons living with dementia are valuable human beings filled with creativity and purpose and joy. If we know how to do that, how to help them be there and to join them there. Exactly. Now, people can go to modsawards.org for more information. Again, sign up if you, you know, want one of those handbooks mailed out to you, or you can download that on November 15th. You said that right. was going to be available. Find them on social media. Their handle is Mods Awards. And Sandy, for you, for Elderwise, again, very simple, elderwise.org. Uh, people can also email you at info at elderwise.org. And then on Facebook, you're elderwise.seattle. And Instagram is just elderwise Seattle. And then um, why don't you tell us a little bit about, because you're a member of the Memory Hub. What exactly is that? If you can tell us that really briefly too. Uh, the Memory Hub is a wonderful place. Um, and it, it also ha is some, has something to do with the vision of Richard Ferry and others. It's a wonderful, humble um, offering to the community. And the way I see it is it takes the research from the University of Washington Memory and Brain Wellness Center 
and you know the active the sort of active programming in the community the the caregiving community different partners the uh, the fry art museum and people are coming together uh, to, to make a space that is welcoming for all people living with dementia and their care partners, their family and friends. It's a place for resources, uh, for uh, collaboration, uh, for community, and to make an impact. Fantastic. Thank you for, for sharing that. And then for Haley, uh, people can go to, she has two websites. One is uh, Kid Caregivers, uh, and that is a dot com. And then she also has Puzzles to Remember, which is a dot org. And you can email her at either of those. Uh, one is puzzles and the number two, remember at gmail.com. The other is kidcaregivers at gmail.com. And again, on social media, you can find her at Kid Caregivers or Puzzles to Remember. And that one is spelled out T-O on, on social media. It's always tricky with those social media and tags there on <laughs> what we need to use. Well, this has just been really exciting. I, I really appreciate all the time and energy that you have put into making our dementia care culture better and uh, by sharing this. And I am so thankful to Mods Awards for, for honoring these two. Say, if you want to learn more about the other winners, you yeah. can, again, just go to modsawards.org to find out more information about those. Yes. And again, there were three organizations and five individuals. Is that correct? correct. We'll spread the word of this show and the work that's being done. And if you, great, um, there's the book, The Elder Wise Way. Fun to hear what's going on. There we go. That's the book that you can either get mailed out mm -hmm. or you can download to learn more about uh, some of the other applicants. Think for yourself or maybe for someone else who next year should should be applying. And, yes. And when, when will that open up again? That'll open up in mid-March. Mid March, so that'll and it'll be, be right open. The corner. Yeah, yeah, and it'll be open through um, mid July. So okay. there's plenty of time, and I'm always available to answer questions and give feedback. Okay, sounds great. Thank you, ladies. Keep up the good work. I appreciate all you do. Thank you. Bye, Thank bye you. everyone. Thank Thanks. You. Bye, Lori. Bye, bye. Bye.